Hey, it's time for another quick video in this clinical toxicology series. The subject this time is whole bowel irrigation, corresponding to the antidotes in depth chapter A2 and parts of chapter 5 in Goldfrank's toxicologic emergencies. The learning objectives are that you'll be able to identify at least two potential indications for whole bowel irrigation in toxicology patients and be able to describe how it would be performed. Whole bowel irrigation is not widely applied for toxic ingestions, but it can be considered for some selected cases. The figure here shows what a patient might look like when getting whole bowel irrigation, and we're going to cover what's in the irrigant solution reservoir bag and consider what's the potential clinical benefit. So when might we consider employing whole bowel irrigation? Well, the idea here is to move the ingested substance through the GI tract to limit how much of it can be absorbed. This implies that we think there's enough of the toxin ingested that it could cause a serious problem, that this potentially dangerous amount is still in the GI lumen such that moving it through faster is likely to avoid serious toxicity. If the ingestion was a fairly trivial amount, or if there were effective methods of countering toxicity even if it was later absorbed, or if the ingestion occurred so long ago there's little more left to be absorbed, then there's no good justification to try it. Generally, then, we might start thinking about whole bowel irrigation if there was a large, fairly recent ingestion. If the ingested substance does not bind well to activated charcoal, which would include, for instance, lithium, iron, or other metals, if we can expect delayed absorption of the ingested substance, which is especially true for enteric-coated and extended-release drug preparations, or if the ingestion can be expected to create an adherent mass, concretion, or drug bezoar, since that would serve as a source of ongoing drug absorption as long as it remained in the body, or if the ingested substance may not currently be an issue, but it poses the dangers of getting worse as long as it's there, such that speeding up GI transit decreases that risk, as might be seen in cases of body packing, body stuffing, or with some other ingestions like lead shot, button batteries, and some beans from toxic plants. So on that last slide, we mentioned body packing and body stuffing, which are ways people might conceal drugs within their bodies. Body packing is the planned and intentional ingestion of packets to evade law enforcement when smuggling drugs. The drug packets are designed to be passed through the body and for the drug mule to succeed, that is, to not die in the process. So these packets are unlikely to leak, but if they do, the person now gets exposure to a large amount of cocaine or heroin or whatever the drug is, and that might not go well. Body stuffing, on the other hand, is when a person is rapidly trying to hide drugs from an immediate law enforcement threat. There's no time to pack up the drugs in anything other than what they're currently in, which is not as likely to be leak-proof. Typically, the body stuffed packets have smaller drug amounts than with body packers, but drug leakage and symptoms may be more common. Whole bowel irrigation is typically done with a solution of polyethylene glycol with balanced electrolytes. The idea is to introduce a mass or bolus of fluid that only helps to propel the GI contents forward, but which doesn't cause fluid or electrolyte shifts or imbalance things in any other way. And this is the same idea behind bowel prep for endoscopy, and the same substances are used. The most common brand in the U.S. is Go Lightly, which contains polyethylene glycol 3350, which means that the average molecular weight of the mixture of polyethylenes is 3,350 grams per mole. The polyethylene holds on to water so that even if you put a lot of this into the GI tract, there should be no net water absorption. It doesn't get metabolized, and all it does is help push things forward. Which brings us to the consequence, which may make things inconvenient for the patient and the nursing staff, in that the patient will be producing a lot of liquidy stool, and you need to consider how that will be collected, and whether law enforcement, if they're involved, may need to collect and retain any evidence. Whole bowel irrigation is generally given through a nasogastric tube. While it's theoretically possible to take a bowel prep orally, GI patients for endoscopy do this all the time, it's not particularly pleasant, and the amount and rate of solution needed and how long this may be needed generally favor not needing to rely on oral intake. In adults, the goal is to get the rate up to 1 to 2 liters per hour. If the ingested substance binds to charcoal, it's recommended to give activated charcoal at the start of bowel irrigation so that there's a charcoal bolus moving along right with the drugs as it passes through. And finally, do we have proof that whole bowel irrigation improves clinical outcome? No. There is certainly anecdotal experience, and it makes sense that it ought to work, but that's not rigorous evidence. 
All right, that's it about whole bell irrigation. I'll be seeing you around.